Hi YouTube, this is Gateway Prepper Gal. Um, today I'd like to talk about uh, rendering soot. Um, this was my job on the family farm from the time I was a little girl. And I guess I inherited it because I was uh, the youngest of the girls and nobody else really liked to do it. I didn't mind doing it, especially in the winter, because I always had the softest hands when everybody else has had chapped hands. Um, but, um, what I'd like to talk today about is rendering soot. And I'd like to go over a few basics about the soot first. Uh, first and foremost is, let me grab the big piece, is the first thing you're going to notice is the color of the soot. Uh, if you go to your butcher and get it, you want to ask for kidney soot. Um, this is beef soot, as you can see. It's creamy and it's very, very fibrous. There's a lot of connective tissues, as you can see. Um, this comes from the kidney of the cow. This particular piece came from a family cow that uh, we had butchered down. And it's completely, uh, basically free a free-range cow, so I know that there's no um, GMOs or anything that I don't want in my family in this meat. Um, the first thing I want to tell you is when you harvest this, you're going to harvest it from around the kidneys. Okay, you want to get it directly in the refrigerator or directly cool as soon as you do that. Um, when you go to render this, the first thing you want to do is you want to pick it up and feel it. It should be soft and buttery feeling almost. Um, so the, you can see why I used to love to do it. So if you look at my hands. Um, because it would leave a coating on your hands even after you wash them so I didn't get chapped hands. The next thing you want to do is you want to smell it. Pick it up, get it close to your face. It should not really have an odor. Here. It should really not have an odor. Um, it should not be discolored. You might see a few little veins in it, um, but that should be about it. It should be this nice kind of creamy looking it should not be solid white if it's solid white and it's got meat attached it's probably large muscle tallow okay it's not the same thing this is going to get hard the large muscle tallow is going to stay soft you can still cook in it um i would keep it refrigerated after you rendered it um i well i do keep this refrigerated anyway um but you can't keep it as long unless you uh, process it down at, for uh, lotions and things like that. This, however, is for cooking. You'll find this in a lot of English recipes, um, biscuits and light breads and, and like pot pies. and It makes a very soft, fluffy uh, dough. Um, very, very lovely texture. And it tastes absolutely wonderful. There's really no taste like it. Um, but the first thing you're going to notice, let me separate this out, is the fibrous connective tissue. You can actually hear it. And you won't hear that in the other. If you can hear that, you're going to pull this apart and get you a spare bowl. Pull off all that you can. And you're going to separate it off to the best of your ability. Um, I usually cut that down into smaller workable pieces. Um, you're not going to get every single bit of it off. I use a crock pot and I usually cut it into smaller pieces once I get a whole bunch of it done. So if you, and you can see sometimes when you cut it you'll find more of the fibers. Uh, more of the connective tissue actually is what it is. And you're just going to pull that right off. Put that in your crock pot. Put your crock pot on low. Um, this takes a while. It's not something you can rush at. But the results are absolutely wonderful. And it's a great flavoid. It, yes, it does have trans fats in it. But we're going to use this sparingly. We're not going to deep fry in this. We're going to use this um, for making biscuits and different kinds of breads and pastries and things like that. So we're just going to put that in our crock pot and we're going to leave that on low. Um, this old rag here, this is what you want. 
a clean old rag. Even though it looks horrible, that's fine because I'm not going to ever use it for anything else because this isn't going to 100% ever come out. You're going to get a slight staining to this no matter what you do. So um, that's what I'm going to use this for probably until I throw it away. Um, one of the things that you can also do, and I've done some on the wood burning stove since it's uh, burning down, is you want you want to put it on the lowest warm you can put it on. You can put it in the coals of a fire that are starting to cool, and you just want to keep turning it um, in a um, in your pot. I like to use cast iron when I put it outside. Um, that way it can't it can't burn at all. You don't want to bring it to a boil. You just want to melt it. And you want to melt it nice and slow. The slower you melt it, the clearer and smoother your soot. Um, and I can show you that in a moment. In the crock pot, you're going to turn your crock pot on low. Um, as low as you can possibly take it. And you're going to let it go from either the morning until... Um, the afternoon or from night until you wake up if you got a crock pot and you have enough to do or a small enough crock pot if you're going to do a little bit. Um, this is the connective tissue. Do not throw that away. That's fish bait. Um, works wonderful. Put it to the side. The fish absolutely love it. I'm going to show you uh, what you're going to do after you get it rendered down. Let me kind of wipe this. My table's not going to be very pretty but that's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is, this is going to be a little bit overkill, sorry about that, is I use glass because it's easier to get the grease out when I'm done. Um, and I'm going to filter this. Let me come over here to the wood burning stove. And this is what it's going to look like. I don't want to spill it. Um, as you can see, you're always going to miss connective tissue. Let me go get a... There we go. Let me get something that I can scrape with. Okay. So you're always going to leave connective tissue no matter what you do. We call those graves. They're kind of... Um, get little solid bits that get left in there. That's the connective tissue. Don't throw that away either because that's going to make really good fish bait too. So they have a use. Um, I could have left this on here longer and rendered a little bit more of it out, but I wanted to let you see. Um, that's what we're going to do with that. And we're just going to let that drip in there until I'm not, we're not going to force it. We're not going to push it through because we don't want any solids. We want a nice, smooth soot. And when we're done with this, we're going to put it, I like to put mine in um, cupcake pans because I like the fact that they're more measured and I can just turn it over, pop them out, and I store them in the refrigerator. I grate what I needed. Usually it's two tablespoons. I bring it up to room temperature, um, maybe slightly above. I might set it on the back of the stove to kind of warm. With my new stove, it's kind of hard. I can show you that at a later date. I got a brand new stove, and it's the uh, heavy duty industrial um, crossbreed, I guess you'd call it. So it has the grates going all the way across the top. So it's a little more difficult <laughs> on uh, that stove than it is on my old stove, but I really like it. It's great for canning. Okay, this looks like it's about ready. So we're going to put that to the side because remember, that's fish bait. We're not going to throw that away. Then I take my old cupcake pan. I mean, it doesn't have to be old. You're not really going to ruin it, but this way I don't have to worry. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to pour. Let's do this one. I'm going to pour it in. Now, when I render all that, of course, I'll get a lot more soot than this. But I'm going to render it. As you can see, it's starting to cool already. And it will do that. And once it cools completely, um, I wouldn't put it in the refrigerator to cool because it'll mess up your clarity uh, sometimes. This I had to put in the refrigerator to cool because we were leaving and I wanted to get it 
cool. But this will, this is what it looks like when it's done. And as you can see, it's just really nice. Still, not really any odor. You're going to, uh, like I said, grate this down. You want, usually it's about two tablespoons to a common recipe. Um, I can even post a few recipes using it if you'd like. Um, I store this in an airtight container. And I happen to store it in the refrigerator because it stores better. And I can show you that if you want. Um, let me move this first. As you can see what I've been up to, I've been dry canning. I have to thank uh, Bev at uh, Mrs. Wolfie and Purvane and um, Cat's Cradle and all of the other ladies because I have some wonderful dry goods now and dry meals in a jar. And whoops, sorry about that. My family really likes them. But like I said, let's let's take this over here and I will show you how I just exactly how I store this this is my brand new refrigerator and I really really like it other than the fact as you can tell I have children I just literally put it in one of the drawers in my refrigerator there we go and I come back and get it when I need it and it's really that easy um, I'm back up here. Yes, I'm very proud of my new refrigerator as you can tell for the first time I have ice and water in the door and the children have had quite fun basically drinking what all the ice water they want. But anyway, um, I thank you very much and I hope that that helps. If you have any questions, please leave a comment for me. Um, I'm willing to walk anybody through it. Um, it's not really that difficult. Like I said, I've been doing this since I was a child and the most time consuming part is actually getting the connective tissue away from your, um, your fat. Um, again, I would not use this for deep frying and I would not, um, like eat this every single day all the time three times three or four times a day because it is a little fatter however in a sh shift situation I can see where we're going to need things like this so um, that's all I got if you like this please subscribe and like down in the box again you know the drill um, you guys have a good day and I will uh, see you later gateway prepper girl out